We got work to do. Welcome to Highway to Hell, a supernatural podcast. I'm Christine. And I'm Kristen. And today we're talking about season four, episode 21, When the Levee Breaks. Yes. Yes, we are talking about it. It broke. <laughs> it did. The um, levee broke. Sam is, Sam has some issues that he needs to go through. He needs <laughs> to yeah. go to some sort of drug addiction counseling some like because... demon therapy yeah what the hell i don't know <laughs> it's it's really intense this episode and i don't know what to think about him anymore we can obviously i want to talk about that at the end but like it's just off he's off, he's off the reservation he yeah no he he definitely is dean is uh definitely looking like the the more rational of the two, which is surprising. Yeah, tables have turned. <laughs> I know. I mean, I, I think Sam has always been like the more emotional one, right? He's always like in season one, he's like, oh, fuck dad. I fucking hate him. And, you know, in season two, he's like drinking himself because he's a special yeah, child. Yeah, that's but... true. He was all sad, <sighs> drunk Sam. But he's not usually I... reckless. Like he doesn't usually like yeah. act on that, you know? He's just kind of like true. moody. Yeah, moody. And I think it's all that pent one. up, like uh, I don't know, he, pent up sexual frustration, pent Hotness. up like Jesus academic. Christ in this episode after he stopped looking like shit. <laughs> oh yeah, right. At the end, I was like, we've wasted a whole episode with you not looking like that. <laughs> we should always have you like that. <laughs> Can I get forty five minutes of Sam walking around the room like that? <laughs> Yeah, I definitely enjoyed, even though it's it's no bueno, I definitely enjoyed him slamming Ruby onto the bed. That I know. Nice. Yeah, that was a good was moment. Mm -hmm. was He's fun. just so big. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a big dude. He's strong. It's hot. It is hot. <sighs> um, also, horny corner. Sorry. <laughs> horny <laughs> corner. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now on to business. <laughs> oh, man. Well, according to the IMDb description, Sam is not only super sexy in this episode, but he is becoming more and more inhuman. Dean and Bobby put him in the safe hold until he gets over his addictions. After Sam escapes with help, unknown to him, from Castiel, he finds Ruby and begins to feed once again. Dean begins to truly believe that the old Sam is gone for good. And that's our description. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's, he's becoming more inhuman. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. And we definitely can kind of see how that's going. Um, this episode was directed by Robert Singer, written by Sarah Gamble. And I was looking through our cast for the episode and we have a bunch of old people come back. Mm hmm. So well, we, we have Samantha. Yeah. Who um, just shows up. And that was good. That was a cool scene. So we got a lot of revisiting actors, some of our favorite characters. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think you maybe had some notes about production info. So I did want to mention because uh, Bob Singer did a really fantastic job directing that he actually said that that was the hardest part of the episode for him was to shoot in that small room, the panic room. He says he'd seen the panic room on film, but I'd never seen the actual panic room on stage. Um, and that set was originally built for filming four pages in there. And I had somewhere around 20 pages to shoot. <laughs> so that's ridiculous. I know. And they actually like, they had removed the desk and the weapons and everything. Um, so because of that, though, right, they had a little bit more room to work with. Um, but his biggest challenge was then, how do I make this interesting? 
I have to stay in here for 20 pages with mostly just one or two people and not make it boring. So uh. <laughs> he had to come with like different interesting angles. And he says that, you know, like Jared obviously stepped up to the plate. And I totally agree. Like, I think, I think that he did a really great job with what he had. Mm -hmm. um, and I was never bored by any one of those scenes. No. Um, yeah, that's interesting to know how he was approaching it and how they felt about it because, yeah, I was never bored either. It always seemed pretty dynamic and there was something happening, you know? It wasn't like, mm -hmm. we're just hanging out in here. This is dumb, you know? Yeah, and I think my favorite shots, though, were the ones from above, like looking down on Jared mm -hmm. uh, or Sam, you know? And he's like looking up or he's just like looking all crazy and then seeing the shadow of the fan like over him. It just it was really great. Yeah, it I like really that well too. Done. Agreed. Um, although they kind of cheated a little bit because they do say that they um, actually redesigned the set to make it just a little bit bigger. Mm. So it is well, actually technically a different set. That's fine. Or it's the same, but they just, like, built onto it to make it larger. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I don't think I would have noticed anyway, you know? <laughs> no, I didn't notice until you told me that. It's like, oh, okay, well, that's good to know. I guess it was hard to cram everybody in there, but I'm right. not going back to the other episodes like, is this slightly bigger? Right. It's just movie <laughs> magic. <laughs> yeah. Um. So another thing in Nicholas Knight's uh, production info is that – Castillo kind of had a mean streak in this episode. He mm -hmm. he did some very interesting things. Um, and actually last episode as well, right? So he, first he refuses to tell Dean why he contacted him in the rapture. Then he betrays Anna to Heaven's enforcers. So what happened to him up in heaven during the rapture that turned him into Heaven's yes man? So Sarah Gamble says, Heaven has this super max prison where you are put through a terrible, terrible Bible camp and brainwashed back to the side of the angels. What? So basically, they're pro-torture up there. There are torture chambers in Heaven and they put Castiel in one. It's like conversion therapy or conversion camp for exactly. angels to be for angels. Christian again. This is very weird. This next part, though, is really interesting because it says what made the betrayal even more heartbreaking for Anna was that she trusted Castiel so completely. It's no secret they have a history together, but what exactly does that mean for angels? Julie McNiven has put some thought into it, and she said, yeah, I think there's a very large love between Anna and Castiel. I was on stage with Misha Cal Collins at a convention, and we were talking. We both kind of feel like even though angels don't really have sex in the way humans do, there's something more there than just being co-workers. Hmm. So it's kind of interesting to see like that they like played those two characters in that way together. Um, I don't know that I necessarily picked up on that, especially since we're like Dean and Anna all the way. Uh, yeah. You know, I have to say, I actually don't. I mean, you know, she can have her opinion of like how she thinks those characters work together, but I, don't pick up on that at all. I feel like they have, if there's a love there, it's because they both have their doubts and they can think for themselves and they kind of like secretly like the humans and want to be more human. Um, then, right. So they share this like affinity for the same thing and that's brought them closer. So there's definitely something more there that they're both, they both believe in together. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> but um, I don't think there's anything like romantic at all. No, I didn't see anything romantic between them. Uh, if anything, yeah, they it's because they do have a history together and they've been through so much together. But right, mutual not respect necessarily. For sure. Right, exactly. Um, but I, I just thought that was interesting that she. It seems like maybe she approached playing Anna in that way. Um, at least in this episode, yeah. so. It's definitely, whether or not it's romantic or not, it's definitely a uh, a betrayal, for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. That was rough. So, mm -hmm. um, is there anything else we would like to mention before we get started? Um, so, of course, we have the survey up 
um, about season four as a whole. You can find that on bit.ly forward slash highway S4 survey and highway spelled H W Y. Um, just like in the title of our podcast. Um, so we're getting a lot more responses from you guys, but um, if you haven't responded yet, please do and let us know all about season four, what you think about it and everything. And um, and it's posted on our social media and our website and all of that. Um, also, because we are nearing the season four wrap-up episode, just know that you can email us your questions or thoughts or whatever. Um, if you have a little bit more to say than what's on that survey, um, to high way to help podcast at gmail.com so that we can read all of your, uh, comments about season four on that wrap up episode. Cause that's coming at us fast. It's yeah. going to be in two weeks guys. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? <clears throat> very exciting. Very exciting. Um, so yeah. That's about it. Cool. Um, okay, well then let's get into it. So uh, we've got our then segment. Uh, we see uh, clips of Lilith, and they're talking about how she's trying to break the break sixty six seals. Mm -hmm. uh, we we flash all the way back to this scene that I just thought about recently. So it was weird again that they brought this up, but um, that part. I forget what episode it was home or something where mm -hmm. she's telling Sam, sorry. And yeah. he's like, for what? Right. Um, and we kind of figure out why right? later. Like, yeah. Uh, so then we see a little kid, Sam telling Dean that he just wants to be normal. Um, a clip of Castiel telling Dean that Sam is headed down a dangerous road and like, coupled with clips of Sam looking like really angry and all pumped up on demon blood. Right. Um, and then the flashback of Dean telling Sam that if he didn't know him, he would want to hurt him. And that was really a heartbreaking part. Mm -hmm. And then the final clip in the then segment is of Dean and Bobby locking Sam in the panic room. Shit. Yep. So then we cut to now. Sam is in Bobby's panic room and we look up and there's a devil's trap made out of metal, like in the ceiling, like the grate where the fan is, is a it's devil's trap. Cool. It's so, so cool. It's awesome. <laughs> I really like that. Uh, Dean opens the little window in the locked door, like where you can just kind of peep through it and mm -hmm. they're talking and Sam's trying to convince Dean to let him out. Dean doesn't budge. He's like, mm -hmm, no. Um, and Sam says, I'm not just some junkie. And Dean's like, really? And like calls him out on being so strung out. He's like, so why do you look like this then? Why is this happening? Yeah. So then Sam gets pissed and he's like, is this really like some kind of drug intervention? Like he gets really, <laughs> which I'm sorry, but if you've ever seen intervention, that's the way this goes every time. Like, <laughs> He's yes. acting like a drug addict. Yes, yes. This, They're this always in happening. denial. Yeah. Um, and I was surprised because I was like, Sam, you literally just bit into a demon's <laughs> neck. Like, you don't you don't think that's weird at all? Like Yeah, you're really gonna tell uh, me that's not like overboard. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. Um, so then Sam's talking to Dean and he tells him that killing Lilith is what really matters. Um, and Dean's like, oh, she's going to die, but me and Bobby are going to do it. And he's like, basically, we're going to go kill her without you. Then Dean closes the little window and walks away. And this is so sad. He pauses on the stairs on his way upstairs and he's like listening to Sam's yells for help. And he just looks ugh, just like stricken. Yeah. Broken. Yes. Um, I did think when when the episode did start and we did see that metal um devil's trap on the ceiling i i thought about it for a second and i think we've seen we've seen that before that that exists when maybe like when ruby came by and we were like okay yeah she definitely can't step her ass inside there but i thought about it like is that are we are we focused on that because we're supposed to think 
this is a place only where like where Ruby can't get in to save Sam or where Sam himself can't step over and can't leave. Well, but I then later that. on, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say later on we see like these broken devil's traps and you know, Sam has left already, but it's like were Dean and Bobby under the impression, I don't know, that maybe that was helping keep Sam inside and 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 in a certain way he is less human because of that? That's a good question because I had thought about it but kind of written it off because when they first so when when it deals with Ruby, she can't even touch it. Like she can't get into it. Yeah. Right? Like demons that's true. can't even break in. So but so this makes even less sense because when they got there with Sam, he was able to walk right in. Mm -hmm. But then yeah. why would any of the seals need to be broken by Castiel if they weren't holding Sam in? Yeah, unless Castiel did it because he wanted to blame it on someone, right? I guess. Maybe make it look like demons did it. But then how how would Ruby be able to break it? Right. Yeah. She wouldn't be able to. You know what I mean? No. Like it doesn't and Dean it doesn't make knows sense. That. Yeah. And he and he I think like us I don't know if he asked that question outright, but he's kind of like confused about what, what the hell just happened. Yeah. I think what happens is like, Bobby's like, you think Ruby did it? And Dean's like, I didn't think she had the mojo or something. Exactly. So they're yeah, like, mm, this it. doesn't make sense. Right. <sighs> yeah. I, I don't know because it simultaneously seems like demons aren't able to get in it, but then also they're not able to get out. I yeah. I don't know. I don't know the rules. <laughs> what are the rules? But <laughs> I guess, you know, it's really interesting to think. Let's say Sam keeps on with this whole demon thing. And he's like drinking more and more demon blood and becomes, he becomes like super demonic. Uh -huh. What happens with like the devil's trap on his chest? Ooh. Like what? Like how know, does, does it, that like, work? Burn away or something? Like that's a good question. Right? I don't know. I don't know. Just a thought. Like, yeah. About how this works. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, so then we cut to Sam inside the panic room, and he looks terrible. He's obviously starting to have like kind of hallucinations. And he starts freaking out because the lights flicker and he hears this sound and he realizes that a demon is coming. And he yells out for Dean and Bobby. He's like, guys, come quick. Something's coming. But then Alistair suddenly shows up behind him and does his, like, fucking creepy Alistair thing. <laughs> he's <laughs> so creepy. He is. Um, and he's like, how will we pass the time? And he's, like, running the scalpel over his face. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's pretty good. Yeah. So then we cut to Sam and he's tied up and like totally splayed out in the middle of the room. And Alistair is standing over him, like cutting, it seems like into his belly or something. And this is horrible to watch. Guys, I do not do well with these torture scenes. <laughs> it's too much for me. Like the set, the sound effects were really good. It was all like, you know, like squishy, like spurting sounds gross, and like yeah. slicing sounds. And I just... And he's just screaming. He's like too good at being tortured. Like the way that <laughs> Jared acted this was like, it was too good. It freaked me out. Mm -hmm. um, so as Sam screams, the scene changes and he's all alone laying on his bed in the middle of the room, just like screaming still. So this is obviously all in his head. Um. Sad. Yeah, that demon blood is some heavy shit. Yeah. If he's having those types of hallucinations. <laughs> <laughs> heavy hitter. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. uh, upstairs, Dean and Bobby are pouring drinks while listening to Sam scream. So the, it seems like they're both just like, I can't fucking take this. This is so awful. Um, and Dean asks how long this is going to last. The phone rings and Bobby says... <laughs> Suck dirt and die, Rufus. Call me again and I'll kill you. <laughs> and then he hangs up the phone. <laughs> right. 
Uh, I love Bobby. I do too. Um, but then Rufus calls back and he starts talking on the other end and he's got Bobby's attention suddenly. Um, inside the panic room, Sam wakes up and sees the little kid version of himself. Yeah. Young Sam says, he's like, uh, yes, you are hallucinating, basically. <laughs> and then um, he asks, Big Sam, how could you do this to me? I thought we were going to be normal. And Sam says, sorry. He's like, I tried. Um, and he argues with his young self. Um, and then young Sam is like, you know, if you'd been with Jess instead of with Dean, she would have survived. She would have lived. Which is f- fucked up. And Sam's like, I know. So now he's like guilt tripping oh. himself about not staying with Jess. Yeah. And young Sam is like, do you think Jess would have wanted you to turn into this? And then Sam's like, basically like, you know, this is how it goes. And he tells him his young self to grow up. And then he like does a ghosty shift to the other side of the room. And young Sam's like, you know, maybe you're right. Maybe there's no escape. How can you run from what's inside you? And then he blinks and his eyes change to yellow like the yellow eyed demon. It's a pretty cool effect. Really he looks cool. fucking demonic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. He looks really creepy. Uh, so then we cut to Bobby and Dean. And uh, Rufus had given Bobby a bunch of recent news that had uh, come out around the country. So they start going through it. And uh, 10 species went extinct in Key West. A 15-man fishing crew was all stricken blind in Alaska. (laughs) Yeah. And a teacher in New York went postal, locked all the doors, and killed exactly 66 kids. Um, And all of these things happened in a single day. That's crazy. I know. But kind of weirdly, I feel like... This could be a news day now for us in real life. Like, I t- like it's crazy. No, but I know. <laughs> There's I know. so much crazy Ten animals sh- going extinct, shit. Ca- no. Yeah. And, like, mass murderings. Right, mass shootings. Um, I it, it, it is kind of interesting that they're all located in the United States. Yeah, that's um, true. Why isn't this a global thing? <laughs> I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I did, yeah. I didn't catch like what, where exactly the other ones were. Weird, but yeah, Key West, Alaska, and New York. It's basically like all points mm-hmm. except for California. Yeah, all of the United um, States is just going to sink into the ocean around Canada. Canada will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is happening? Is it just like the United States? That's where like Lucifer lives or some shit. <laughs> like, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to be um, the first to go. Right. But um no, it it's it's really dark. Um and it just means, yeah, the seals are breaking super fast. Like what is happening now, guys? Like right. so that's the scary part now is that since they're happening so quickly, uh it must mean they're getting close and they don't know how close. So it's like, oh shit. It's yeah, and it's also interesting because I don't know. Some of the other seals that we've heard of have been enacted by by demons. Like that. That's really. I don't. I, just thinking of okay, like because I could see like a, the teacher maybe got possessed right by a demon, and then that happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the whole thing with the Alaska man being blinded. Mm-hmm. Like, how does that happen? How, how does a demon do that? And the animals going extinct. Right. Are we just like supposed to think like demons were just like running around Key West and just like killing all of these animals? I don't know. So That's that true. they would That's go weird. extinct or something? I don't know. It, they're sort of like like the an, the antithesis of like miracles happening on Earth, right? But I, I guess how, how did the demons go about it? Yeah. It's like... Um the the plague or something right like the signs of what are what were the signs 
um, like the locusts yes. and the the where Passover uh, came firstborn from. sons. Yes, right. All that stuff. All that. All that Bible stuff. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Bible stuff. I watched the Prince That's of Egypt. I was just okay. Say. <laughs> it's such a good movie. It's really good. It's oh it God. is great. Did you know that Jeff Goldblum <laughs> does the voice of one of the characters? I'm no, pretty sure it's Jeff Goldblum. No a bunch of famous people do the voices, and I never knew that until not too long ago. It's highly underrated. Oh, the music is really good. Okay, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, fuck. All these seals are being broken, like now. Uh, so Bobby talks to Dean and tries to tell him that maybe they should let Sam out to try and stop the apocalypse because he's like, I mean, can he do it? Is this possible? And Dean's like, yeah. And he's like, okay, well then maybe we need to talk about this. Um, right. So, but then Dean knows that it would probably kill Sam um, if he tried to kill Lilith. And Bobby, Bobby tells him um, that maybe Sam's trapped here instead of fighting because they love him too much. So he makes a really good case for it because Dean's like, no, I'm not going to let him, you know, I'm not going to let anything happen to him. But Bobby's right. like, I think that's our downfall. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah. then we cut to Sam and he's sitting in the middle of that room, the panic room. This image is on Netflix. Do you get this image uh, popping up when you go oh, to... Where he's like, like, yeah. yeah. Yes. It's everywhere. And I was like, when am I going to see that? Yeah. We, you got I've been to seen see it. have it for a long time. I know. Yeah. It's like I- iconic uh, capture of Sam. It's a good one. I can see why. It is. Uh, so he looks over the bed and sees a water pitcher and a glass sitting on a table on the other side of the room and he's obviously really thirsty and like trying to get to it but struggling and then he hears poor baby and looks around and his mom is standing there mm. and her and stomach is bloody, bloody. From his stomach yeah it's an, yeah Ooh. it's not a happy picture of her no. and she says <laughs> this is kind of a weird line but she says you look just awful Thanks, Mom. Right. Uh, So Sam assumes that she's going to tell him how disappointed she is. He's like, okay, let's hear it. But she's like, no, not at all. Uh, You're doing the right thing. She says he's not, that he's just being practical um, and she's proud of him. So this is interesting. Like, I don't, (laughs) anyway, I'll tell you the rest of this and then tell you my thoughts, I guess. No, yeah, I definitely have thoughts as well. Well, then she's like, um, Dean doesn't understand. Uh, And then she tells Sam about how, you know, she was a hunter and came from a long line of hunters. And they all knew that there would be difficult choices to make. And then she says, yes, our family is cursed. But you have the power to turn it into a gift and use it against them. And he's like, for what? For revenge? And she's like, no, for justice. And Mm -hmm. Sam's like, well, what if it's stronger than I am? And what if Dean's right? And she says, Dean can never know how strong you are because Dean's weak. What? Um, Yeah. But she says uh, that Sam has to go on without Dean and do everything it takes. So Sam takes that to mean that he has to kill Lilith, even if it kills him. And his mom says, make my death mean something. And then they have this like really tender hug and Sam's like, he looks like he's maybe about to cry. Like he's just like having this painful moment with her and she disappears. Yeah. So I don't, well, my thought with this was because Alistair and mini Sam, like they were just so mean and it just felt like, yeah, it's this demon blood just attacking Sam. Um, but also, I don't know. It, it's just very interesting because each, uh, each hallucination that comes up is doing something slightly different, mm-hmm. right? Um, Alistair, it's, it's just, it's just torture. It's just like this demon blood coming out of him. But mini Sam is like guilt tripping him. But then this Mary 
hallucination is trying to trying to get him like on board with what he's doing or like keep him on board with whatever he's right. doing he's she's like it's reinforcing right. the idea that like dean is weak and only sam can do this and it's like where is this coming from yeah you know yes that's what i have uh, kind of some problems with too i don't know i mean Maybe we're supposed to assume, because, like, all of this is in Sam's head. Like, you know, there's a part of him that still feels this way. So he's, like, using her to, like, justify it to himself. Um, I don't know. And then she says, yes, our family's cursed. That was weird to me, too. Like, what do you mean? Yeah, I wrote that down. What? I think that's interesting that she says mm-hmm. that. I don't know what else so, to from that. But yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah, it just felt like it just felt like the other ones were definitely a part of Sam, but it felt like Mary was more coming from an external influence, you know? She, it wasn't a Sam. It was like fucking, I don't know, Azazel like living inside Sam or whatever, something, you know? Yep. Are you taking selfies? Yes. Both of my dogs are laying behind me, being good boys. I thought you were just like, you know what? I look really good right now. (laughs) No. (laughs) Let me just go ahead and take a selfie. (laughs) I look so good right now. (laughs) No, I was just trying to sneak a quick behind me selfie because they're both like laying in a row right behind me and it's really adorable. They're being good and quiet. I was afraid I was going to hear barking and stupid shit. So. Right. Um, no, yeah. I I don't know. We'll see. This this scene, too, like, out of all of the ones in the room, like, stuck with Sam the most because then he starts, like, parroting her later. So, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he does. He does start, like, expressing everything that she's saying right. directly to Dean. It hit him. So then outside, uh, Dean's pacing around and Castiel shows up. It looks like it's by one of Bobby's workshops. And uh, Dean's like, where have you been? You know, he's like, about time. I've been screaming myself hoarse for two hours. And then he asks Castiel what he was going to tell him um, in the last episode. But Castiel ends up saying that he can't. He's like... Well, at first he's like, well, it's not important. And Dean's like, okay, bullshit. It is important. And then Castiel looks him in the face and he's like, I can't. So now I feel like he's starting to crack a little bit. Like we still know that old Cass is in there, but he's just choosing not mm-hmm. to act on it at all. Yeah. Um, He's trying to be a good boy. <laughs> but that's good. He's not just like completely brainwashed, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Because then he also says sorry. He, like, apologizes to Dean for not being able to tell him about it. Uh, And he's like, let's get to why you really called me here. Uh, It's about Sam. And Dean's like, you know, can he kill Lilith? And Castiel says possibly um, he could stop the apocalypse. But he would need to drink more demon blood. And this would turn Sam into a creature that Dean would probably feel compelled to kill. So that's a little unnerving. Um, Mm -hmm. And Castiel is basically like, you know, this doesn't have to happen because the angels believe that it's you, Dean, who stops the apocalypse. He's like, but you have to accept it. And Dean asks, so if I do this, Sammy doesn't have to. And Cass says, if it gives you comfort to see it that way. So I don't trust this statement. I don't know what that means, but if Dean is asking, like, so if I accept this, I'm doing it instead of Sam, like I'm saving him from having to do this. And Castiel's right. like, uh, sure. <laughs> right? I definitely don't trust Cass in this episode. No. He's he's being a little sneaky bitch. I mean, as we see later yeah. on. Um, 
and it's just I don't know I I don't know what's going on with Cass I don't know what's you know what are these motives um but it's I think it's pretty clear that there's something going on and I'm surprised Dean didn't pick up on it yeah, he's just all, all right with becoming like basically a born again Christian right. just you know and maybe he's doing um, it you know for obviously like more for Sam but it's still like what the hell Ooh, which is kind of interesting too because you know they Sam and Dean have talked in the past about how they like get stuck in between demons who use them against each other basically and now it's like the angels are doing that too yeah yeah um everybody has their own thing going mm -hmm. on and they're just using Sam and Dean as pawns right and they know how to play them because they know how much they each love each other. So they're like, oh, Dean, if you do this, yeah, sure. Sam will totally be like not involved. Whatever. Right. <laughs> He's not even doing it convincingly. No. So, you know? Um, oh, God. Sure, if you say so. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. We right. think. <laughs> oh, sucker. <laughs> yeah. So he says that to Dean and Dean's like, God, you're a dick these days. And walks away. Um, and then Dean says that he'll do it. But Castiel makes him start like reciting like his he's like swearing him in. Yes. So Dean has to recite and say, I give myself over wholly to serve God and his angels. And then oh. Yeah. Ugh. And then Cass makes him swear that he will follow God's word as swiftly and obediently as he did his own father's. Which was an interesting way to Dang. put it. Dang. Yeah, what are you yeah. talking about? Yeah. So um, then Dean's just like, okay, so now what? And Cass tells him that he has to wait and they'll, the angels will call on him when it's time. Which is a little weird too, like... I don't know. I guess you sort of think like, okay, he's inducted now, you know, he's going to be helping. And so they like bring him in and like make a plan and like do something. But they're like, okay, we'll call you when it's time. Time for what? What's happening? Yeah, what, see you later. What are we doing? Right. So. Time for what? Exactly. Which Dean was already mad about that they didn't tell him anything, that they didn't tell him their plans before that he was just a cog in the machine and mm -hmm. just you know yeah i don't blame him for being pissed about that but he's so again like even later on when he's talking to bobby about it or maybe it was before like when bobby is like what where the fuck are your angel friends and dean is just kind of going on blind faith at this point he's just like it, it's all right they're they're working they're they're doing something but that's all he has yeah. right and but that's not like dean at all to trust in anybody but himself no. much less god or angels yeah um i'm not I mean, maybe we could like pinpoint something that like really changed him, but yeah, this is definitely different. Like he, there is some trust there or he wouldn't just be going along with this. He's deferring to them. Uh, so then we cut to Sam in the panic room again, again, and he's having some kind of attack. Uh, he looks in the mirror and sees these dark veins spreading all over him and he screams for help from Dean and Bobby. Uh, upstairs, Bobby is talking to Dean and he's like really confused about why Dean signed up to help the angels. And Dean says, um, well, you know, this is the least I've ever trusted them. Basically, he's like, they come on like shady politicians from planet Vulcan. <laughs> so <laughs> I had to mention it because I'm the Star Trek nerd. And if you know what this means, it means you never trust politicians from Planet Vulcan because they're always fucking sneaky and have something up their sneeve, their, their sneeve, their sleeve. <laughs> and they show up on your planet and I'm they're sure like, they have something up their, their sneeze, sneeze too. whatever a sneeve is. That's like a Dr. Seuss word. Um, <laughs> yeah, they just show up on your fucking planet and they're like, oh, yes, let's t let's uh, have some peace talks. It's a sham. It's not. It's a fucking sham. Uh well, so now you know. Now I know. 
<laughs> you know about Snape. Know about politicians from Planet Vulcan. Um, but Dean makes a pretty good argument, and he just basically convinces Bobby that he doesn't have any other choice because he's like, well, it's uh, either trust demons or trust the angels. So I know which one I'm going with. Right. Um, again, doesn't doesn't make much sense in Dean world. Um, the other thing I had wanted to mention, though, was how he was like, somebody asked him earlier. Oh, Bobby. Duh. Bobby had asked him earlier, like, do you think you can take on Lilith? And Dean's like, yes. What? Like, how? No, how yeah. does he think that he could take him? I don't know. That was weird at the time, too. We were like, how are you going to do that? (laughs) You tried. You tried, buddy, last year, and you got eaten alive by a a hellhound. It didn't go well. Right. Um, So, yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Agreed. Um, Dean and Bobby are talking, and they suddenly stop because they realize that they don't hear Sam anymore. So they run downstairs and open up the little window and they see him having like a fit on the ground. It looks like he's having a seizure. Um, They're like, do you think he's faking? And then suddenly Sam gets picked up and thrown against the wall. And they're like, nope, not faking. Um, (laughs) (laughs) What the fuck is going on with him? Yeah, shit. He's he's possessed. They need to call on a priest. Um, And then he gets like rolled around the wall. He's like, yeah, I don't know any other way to describe that. He's rolling along. Right. He's basically like your mother's sex cock in hell, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like just exorcist yeah. level. Head's going to spin around. I, I was expecting, I was expecting his head to spin around <laughs> like any moment because he's just like going it crazy. Was nuts. Uh, so Dean and Bobby run over to him and they like pull him off the wall. And hold him down on the ground. And while they're holding him down, they put like, I I guess it was Bobby who took his belt off and put it in Sam's mouth so he wouldn't bite his tongue or something. And uh, Dean was like looking at him and like had this moment where he was like kind of paralyzed or something, just like looking at him like that. And I, I guess he was kind of like seeing him as a monster, like this other thing now, you know, like he's turned into something that's not Sam. Oh, interesting. I I took it just like, like oh, baby Sam. Like what's going on with him? You know. Mm-hmm. But no, I, with everything going on in this episode, that makes a lot of sense. Which is so sad. Um. Yeah. So then they tie him onto the bed instead, and Sam wakes up in handcuffs, and Dean's standing at the foot of the bed, and he's like, "We had to do it. That demon blood was flinging you all around the room." And he asks Sam why he did this to himself. And he says, revenge? Revenge for what? Uh, For me, you know, going down to hell? Have you noticed that I'm back? What's the point, basically? Which is really interesting because we've talked about this before. Like, I don't really know why Sam's so mad. (laughs) Like, it it doesn't make sense as to why he's been stalking her this this hardcore. Yeah. I feel like a few episodes at least ago, we, you and I were like, so what is his beef again with her? Yeah, no, I, I had to think about that as well. Um, because I think, I think like early on in season four, what was established was he was like on, he wanted to get at Lilith because she had, I mean, she hadn't actually killed Dean, that's not actually what happened. Dean had already had that whole deal made, right? But um, but I think he was just like really pissed because like Dean died and and Lilith was still out there and he felt like he could by killing her in he could like bring Dean back or like or like seek revenge against Dean's life. I don't know. It, it it's not very clear. I mean, all of um, that sort of made more sense at the time, but as this has gone on, it's like and he's gotten more and more intense about it. It really doesn't make any sense anymore. <laughs> right, we're like, wait, like we forgot. Haven't you forgotten right, already? Right. <laughs> Haven't you forgotten like why each of you was mad? Like <laughs> right. let it go. <laughs> I do that. Like, I and, just forget why I was mad. And so I'm not mad anymore. It's like, oh, well, must, must, not, oh, must yeah. not have been Oh, we're, 
<laughs> were we <Yeah>. fine? <laughs> totally forgot. Sorry. No, completely. Um, but what what I was thinking about also was how can you remind me how Lilith came to be, like where she came out of? Did she just like pop out? Did Azazel like call her? He didn't no, call right? Her. It was just like did she it was just did hey, she first appear yo, like before he died or after I think I think it was after. I think it was in like Ju and Bello. Oh, because I guess the all the demons were let out and they were like, we need to fucking get these demons. And then they were like, yo, there's a there's a new demon in town and her name is Lily. Right. She's right. That's how she came about. So I don't know. I I'm I'm trying to stretch here to see like if maybe Sam maybe feels a bit um like it's his fault that Lilith is out there because of the whole demons being let out of hell and you know um Azazel shit but I don't know that's that that may be a stretch I mean, but I, I see what you're saying there may be something there yeah, I mean I I know yeah. where that comes from but that doesn't it doesn't make sense to me you know it just at this point it's not a good enough no. excuse like right like yes she's dangerous and you should be stopping her in some way but um it just feels like yeah like sam is going off of information that maybe we don't know right so then sam tells dean that the biggest reason he's going after lilith is to stop the apocalypse but this is weird because they both know that that's dean's gig he's like that's my gig remember like they've told the angels have told us right. that i have to do this this was a whole thing i was really upset about it for a while Although Sam did tell Chuck, like, well, I I don't think he can handle it. No, yeah. I mean, we know that, unfortunately, that Sam thinks that Dean's not strong enough and he's, like, a much better hunter than him now and all this silly shit. Which came out of nowhere. Right. He died and made you Dean. (laughs) We're back. Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. I guess Dean died and made you Dean. Now that I think about it. But anyway. (laughs) Uh, so then we cut to another shot in that same scene and we see that Dean isn't even in the room. So Sam is talking to himself again. This is in his head. Mm-hmm. Uh, upstairs again, Bobby asks Dean, he's like, okay, one more time. Are we really doing the right thing here? Um, he doesn't think that this cold turkey method is working. Uh, and he says that Sam won't last much longer if he doesn't get some demon blood. And Dean's like, no no way i'm not letting him have more demon blood um and if he dies at least he dies human which is crazy yeah yeah That's intense Ugh. uh so then downstairs sam is talking to the dean in his head again um and dean's like taunting sam and this is where he starts telling him that he's a monster and dean or sam gets super pissed he's like fighting against the restraints And then the real Dean upstairs is saying that he would die for Sam in a second and he can't let him turn into a monster. Mm. And this was really sad. He's like, he looks like he's about to cry. And he's like, I guess I found my line. I'm not going to let my brother turn into a monster. It's like, oh, the real Dean, you know, loves you so much. I know. At the same time that like fake Dean is telling him like you're a monster. and making him feel horrible. Or he's not he's not gonna let him turn into one of the filthy things that oh, we hunt. Yeah. Ugh. Which is yeah. Yeah, dark. it's gotten real dark. <laughs> um, so then suddenly the dean downstairs disappears. Um, after some time passes, Sam wakes up and it's nighttime, and he looks down and his handcuffs magically open. And then the door unlocks mm-hmm. and swings slightly open. Uh, So he calls out to see if anybody's there and then like slowly gets up and walks out the door and is like checking outside the whole time. Uh, But then there's no one around. So he goes upstairs and the door closes behind him and then the camera moves and we see Cass next to the door, closing it and locking it. What the fuck, dude? What is Cass up to? I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on that? Maybe. 
at the end at the end perhaps yeah, maybe pro- I mean, prophecy wise mm-hmm. just what what yeah so sam goes upstairs and he grabs a jacket and sneaks past dean and bobby who are sleeping uh then we cut to a uh, cast by himself and he's on a dock and anna shows up behind him uh he turns around and he's like you really shouldn't have come but Anna's pissed and she wants to know why he let Sam out. She's like, it's so much worse than we thought. And Dean was trying to stop him. You know, what are you doing? And Cass says again, you really shouldn't have come. And then two angels show up on either side of her and they grab her arms. And then we just see like a bright angel light on Cass's face. Mm-hmm. And then it fades and he looks really sad and like turns away to look out over the water. And I was like, oh, what the, f- what is happening? What are you doing? I don't know. Cass is going, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about him. He's, he's definitely heaven's bitch again. That's, that's, yeah. that's all we know. That's clear. And it doesn't seem like heaven is working on good intentions. I mean. Yeah. They're doing some, some shady stuff. Mm hmm. So then we cut back to Sam and he's unlocking the Impala and he hears a gun cock behind him. He turns around and Bobby tells him to go back inside with him. He's like pointing a shotgun at him. Ugh. And Sam's like, you won't shoot me, Bobby. Bobby goes, don't test me. And then Sam walks closer to him and closer. And then the gun is like right up against his stomach. Mm hmm. So then they both start like almost crying. Yeah. I marked it as Sam watery eyes here. Although For sure. was he faking it? I don't know. I don't think no. so. I, I don't, don't think, think so either. So. Yeah. I think he's sad. Yeah. I just want him to be sad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Bobby's like, we're just trying to help you. And Sam moves the barrel of the gun up to his chest and he says, then shoot. Oof. Um but Bobby doesn't shoot and Sam quickly grabs the gun and hits Bobby in the face with the butt and knocks him out. And Sam's trying, it looks like he's trying really hard not to cry right here. Uh, he like throws the gun down on the ground, like kind of disgusted. And then we see that he hot wires the car and leaves Bobby lying on the ground. That's so, so sad. Yeah. Um, so Bobby's up. He's moving. He and Dean open up the panic room and they're very confused about how Sam got out. All the devil's traps are broken and Bobby thinks that Ruby helped him. But Dean says that this is where he's like, well, she's, I don't think she had, has enough mojo uh, to even touch the door. So Bobby kind of lets it go, but Dean's still really confused about what happened. And he says that murdering Ruby is the next big item on his to-do list. And Bobby's like, I thought you were on call for the angels. And Dean goes, I am on call in my car on my way to murder the, murder the bitch. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I get it. That works. They can reach <laughs> him anywhere. Yeah. You don't have to stay put. <laughs> um, so then Bobby's worried that Sam's going to be impossible to find. But Dean's just like, yeah, we'll see, basically. Uh, we cut to a really nice hotel room, much nicer than the crappy little motel rooms that they're usually in. I was like, how the hell did Sam, because I'm sure he didn't, like, take any money on yeah, him Yeah, how was he going to, like, put put a deposit, of, like, a card on file or something? <laughs> right. He, this is a nice place. Apparently, it's a honeymoon suite as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Which is really fancy. Um <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it was pretty good. But then it's like such a stark contrast because Sam's sitting in this really nice room, like shaking and itching and looking like shit. He yes. looks awful. He does. Uh, then there's a knock at the door and he opens it and it's Ruby. Uh, and his first question to her is if she opened the door to let him out and uh, out of the panic room. And she's like, no, I couldn't even get close. Like, everything in that place is designed to fuck me up, basically. Which was also interesting because I, I wasn't sure if she even knew where he was at. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. 
Like, so I guess she does kind of have tabs on him or I guess or something. She doesn't really I don't know. seem to care. Right. But yeah, that she she did know where he was at and everything. But mm-hmm. that is interesting, though, that he's not like. Does he even ask after that? I forgot. Like, well, how the fuck did I get out? But she's totally like, yeah, I think he does. Yeah, and she's like, I don't know. (laughs) Literally, all 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 I know is you're out, and yeah. So it's like, what what's going on there? Like, we know that Ruby and Cass are obviously not working together, right? So why isn't Ruby a little bit more questioning of how he got out? I don't know. She just is really like not concerned about it. And she's just like glad that he's out now. But she's just like, whatever. So I wish I could be like that in life. Jeez. Like, <laughs> <laughs> really able to just let things go. Mm-hmm. Real, real go with the flow. <laughs> uh, so then Sam's like pissed with her. Understandably. He's like upset about how she never called him and tried to help him when he needed her. And she says that she's sorry and she's sorry that he's hurting. She's like, I had no idea Dean would do that to you. And then he looks really sad and he goes, you and me both. <sighs> I know. Ugh. I know. Um, so then Sam explains that he booked this nice room to try and shake Dean. And Ruby's like, mm, are you sure that's going to work? Because he knows you better than anybody. And Sam goes, not as well as he thinks. Well, yeah, he he does. Turns out. Yeah, I love this whole part. <laughs> he does know you as well. Dean as figuring thinks. it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then Ruby's sad that things have gotten so bad between Sam and Dean, and she reaches up to touch Sam's face, and then he just grabs her, sniffs her, and then throws her on the bed. Okay, sniff. Yeah, he, there was like a full body, like – his head in front of her, like, like I'm gonna smell that is all of so you. Fucking weird. Yeah, no, that's not okay. Yes. That demon blood got him bad. This is really. <laughs> yeah, and he's like able to sniff it out now. He's oh. able to sense it in some way. That's so gross. No. <laughs> <laughs> um. So then they look like they're gonna start making out or something, but he moves down and grabs a small knife from around her ankle and then cuts her arm and starts drinking her blood and she's like totally getting off on it Mm -hmm. which is yeah she's into that interesting like Mm -hmm. what is she i don't know what she's getting out of this i don't know i mean we've seen true blood now together you know (laughs) like (laughs) that's true (laughs) maybe it's a a sex thing who knows or mm-hmm. i don't i don't know yeah it could be you know? she just doesn't seem very concerned with him when he's not around i don't know i don't know what her motives are here she's a, she's a little yeah I, I i'm not sure i trust her too well yeah it does not with her mm-hmm. uh so then back with bobby and dean bobby tells dean that sam ditched his car in jamestown and that two cars were stolen there afterward one was a 1999 Honda Civic, and the other was a white 2005 Escalade with custom rims. <laughs> and Bobby's like, yeah, it's like a, I, don't, I forget what he called it, like a red flag. So he's not going to take that. And Dean's like, no, that's exactly why he took it. Yeah. So he does know. Exactly. Well, exactly how, like, Dean thinks. Right. And exactly how Dean knows Sam and just like, I don't know, just like the the little web of connections there is so great. Like, I love it. Yeah. (laughs) So then we cut back to Sam and Ruby and they're in bed and Ruby's like looking at him and she's like, "Uh, your appetite is much bigger. And Sam's like, what do you mean? It's all offended. And she's like, no, that's good. Uh, It means you're almost strong enough to kill Lilith. And then he asks how many seals are left. And she's like, I don't know, three, two. What? So chill. Yeah. She's saying this what? in Why such are we a chill way. Hanging out oh, in yeah, bed. whatever. Right. She just doesn't. Oh, yeah. Just whatever. Three or two. Yeah. Who knows? No big deal. Uh, Ruby tells him that she also found out that the last seal can only be broken by Lucifer's first, which... 
this was kind of cool. We got a little bit of lore. Um, apparently this comes from the story about Lucifer being pissed that God created humans. And so he took a human and twisted it into the first demon. And that's why he was locked up in the first place. And this first is apparently Lilith, which is maybe a little disappointing. That it's, that it's, yes. <laughs> I, I love this story. I think I, why had I assumed that we had already heard it through like Castiel and Anna's point of view? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure either. I, I know he talks about Lilith a little bit before, but um, I love the story. Great concept. Execution. I don't know. about. Right. I don't know. Right. Because we started out with like little Lilith, who I love. I love that performance. I oh, wish yeah. it wasn't Lilith, though. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And then this Lilith, who we're not seeing. Like, she's she doesn't feel that much of a threat to us because we haven't seen exactly what she can do right. or it, that she's even more powerful than let's say Azazel was. Right. Yeah. I agree with that. She's not scary enough to be Lucifer's first. That's how I feel about it. Yeah. So yeah, just throwing that out there. Not, not the coolest first, but whatever. Maybe Dean can take her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> so um, Sam says that he's like, okay, so that if I can kill Lilith, then I can stop the whole thing. There will be no apocalypse. And Ruby's like, right. Uh, so I don't know where she is. <laughs> um, but she says that she knows how they can find Lilith uh, by finding her, quote, personal chef. And Sam's like, what does she eat? And Ruby's like, mm, you don't want to know. Babies. Ah! <laughs> oh, <laughs> chunky babies. Uh, so we cut to two nurses walking down a hospital hallway. And one nurse is talking about a woman who had worked there at the hospital. And she walked out of the NICU with two babies. And now that woman is saying she was possessed when she did it. Um, and then they walk over and they look in at the babies in the NICU and that nurse is like, who could ever lay a finger on them? And the other nurse says, I know they're just delicious. And her eyes turn black. <laughs> I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a little weird because I would never, uh, I like, I would still feel weird about anybody saying that babies are delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, please. Don't Regardless say that. of whether or not you mean it, it's oh, your baby's so cute. She just looks delicious. <laughs> I think I would be like, okay, you can go now. Back away you can slowly. Leave. <laughs> right. It's so weird. Uh, so then, so, shit. Back at the hotel, Sam walks out looking like a full fucking snack. Who gave, who gave him the <laughs> yeah. right to look like this? He's got, like, slick back hair. His sleeves are rolled up. He's got a V-neck underneath his button-down shirt. Just fucking have mercy. Like, so I mean, beautiful. maybe the demon blood isn't so bad, <laughs> you know? It's doing him some favors, I gotta say. Maybe he can have all the demon blood he wants in my book. Like, Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I just had to take that moment. Uh, so, yeah, he's clearly back to full strength after having some of mm -hmm. Ruby's blood. Uh, she tells him that in order to kill Lilith, he'll need more demon blood than she can give him. Um, so they have to, I guess, try to find more. And then Sam gets sad about Dean again. And he says that he hopes that when all this is over, that they can fix things. Then... Uh, Bobby calls Dean and tells him that that white Escalade was ditched and Sam's probably in a town called Gold Spring and Dean's about two hours away from there. So he's like talking about his plan and Bobby stops him and he's like, you know, whenever you find Sam, it's got to be about bringing him back, not pushing him away. And he's like, you got to get through to him. And Dean doesn't respond. He just hangs up. 
So that's a good sign. Yeah. Um, Dean is in their hotel sneaking around and he finds the honeymoon suite and he sneaks up behind Ruby who almost doesn't hear him in time. She turns around and Dean slices at her and he gets her arm and then they start struggling and um, where was I? Oh yeah. And then Dean almost gets her again. He's about to stab her, but Sam grabs him and throws him off. Um. Dean's pissed that Sam tried so hard to keep him from crashing their party. He's like, uh, but it didn't work because here I am. And then Sam's super calm and he says, Dean, I'm glad you're here. Like, what? Now you're like sage, Sam? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but Dean doesn't want to talk until Ruby's dead. He's got his eyes on the prize. And so then Sam tells Ruby to get out and they let her leave she like runs out of the room and then yeah, they start arguing she takes off. she's scared of dean yeah she's like oh shit i gotta go <laughs> she should be scared of dean yeah she knows he can take her yeah so um then they start arguing about ruby and dean's convinced that she's bad news because she pumped sam full of demon blood and then left him high and dry for weeks um you know his power has been up and down and all over the place but Sam still buys Ruby's story and he tells Dean that she was looking for Lilith. And Dean says, that's French for manipulating your ass 10 ways from Sunday. Which is totally fair. Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, like what she's doing, does. I'm, I, I don't know. There's a lot of questions about what she's doing and it def definitely does seem manipulative. Mm -hmm. uh, but Sam doesn't think so. Uh, and then Dean says, you know, I just want you to be okay. You would do the same for me, uh, which is totally true. Sam tells Dean that they found a demon that's with Lilith. And he's like, come with us. We'll do this together. We'll take her down. And Dean's like, great. Sounds good. Just get rid of Ruby. Like, that's a deal breaker. And then Sam says he can't. Uh, he's like, you know, I can't do it without her, meaning the demon blood. and. Dean like turns around and like he kind of looks at the camera and he's just like so like hurt and in disbelief. He's just like so upset. Um, I know. Yeah. I know. And Sam gets some more watery eyes and it's so sad. Yeah. So they're both just like trying not to cry again. Um, and Sam says that he hopes that someday Dean will understand that he's the only one who can do this. And Dean's like, Excuse me? Again, Dean, you can't you can't do this. I don't know where you got it into your pretty well, the angels probably. No, right. Yeah. His, I mean, like, I guess they make him feel like head, if he right? has the power of the angels behind him or whatever, like they, you know, there's a plan for that to happen. I I kind it's of I don't like know, I'm going to be honest. So I don't offended by it. Well, I'm going to be honest. I'm kind of on Dean's side about this. Like I don't think that he's stupid for thinking that he could take this on if he's been told by God's angels that he's the chosen one. It wasn't like we think you can do this. Hey, just show up here and now. Yeah. It's like no, you're literally the only they have told him that he's the only one who can do this because of how it was broken. So that still made sense mm -hmm. to me. Like I don't know how it's supposed to happen, but that's some pretty strong like backup yeah that's true that is true i i guess i don't know if dean knows how many seals are left though or how, yeah and like how dire he, the situation is yeah and he still doesn't have any clue of what the plan is you know mm -hmm. they haven't told him anything so it's just it's a little it's just odd yeah i agree because again like when Dean was sort of like recruited, you'd think that they would be like, all right, let's get going. So here's the plan, you know, <laughs> let's start training you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like there's going to be something happening here and there's not. So that's a little worrisome. Like, I don't know mm -hmm. what, what's mm -hmm. supposed to happen. Uh, okay. So blah, blah, blah. They were arguing. Oh yeah. So then Dean's like, excuse me. You know, I think the angels have told me that I'm the one who's going to do this. And Sam's like, oh, right, the angels think you're going to do it. And Dean's like, you don't think I can? And Sam goes, no, you can't. You're not strong enough. And Dean's like, who the hell are, hell are you to, like, think that? And Sam goes, I'm being practical here. I'm doing what needs to be done. 
So he's saying all the like same things that his mom said in this part. Yeah. Um, Sam says that he always followed Dean because he's his brother, but now he needs Dean to trust him just for once. And Dean looks at him and he's like, no. Uh, he says he doesn't know what Sam is doing. Um, or I'm sorry. He says that Sam doesn't know what he's doing. He's like, you have no idea what you're doing right now. And it's not even what you're doing. It's what you are. Ugh, so then we get into the rest of this weirdness. Sam's like, what do you mean? Spit it out. Yeah, say it. Say uh -huh. it. <laughs> and Dean's like, and then they both almost start crying like here again. And Dean says, it means you're a monster. And then Dean has oh a single God. tear. <sighs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's so sad. It's no. fucking awful. <sighs> so then... Sam hits him really fucking hard. Like he like throws yeah. him across the room. Yeah, he does. It's all like pumped up from that demon blood. And then Dean slowly stands up and they go at it. Super heavy hitting fight. They're all over the room. They are hitting the shit out of each other. And Sam hits Dean so hard that he knocks him like face first into a mirror behind him. And then he picks him up and throws him through that like faux wall. Right. And and Dean doesn't stand a chance no. at all. Yeah, no. He goes down pretty quick. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's also like he throws Dean through that faux wall, but it's like down a step. So like onto floor that's even like further down. Oof. And then Sam gets on top of him and starts strangling him. And he strangles him for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he gets up and lets him go just as it's about to get like really scary. Yeah. Um, and then Sam says, you don't know me. You never did. And you never will. And Dean looks up at him and he says, you walk out that door. You don't ever come back. And then Sam looks down mm -hmm. at him and looks really upset and then walks through the door and leaves Dean lying there. Oh my God. I know. It's so interesting Shit. that, um, that we had a fight between Sam and Dean earlier on this season. And it's sort of like, I don't know, it was kind of a foreshadowing moment to this fight, you know, which is like a lot more serious because it's, it's not, you know, some love spell or whatever. It's, it's actually Sam and Dean. Right. Fighting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was thinking that too. Like we've seen them fight before, but not this seriously except when they were under that spell like um with the siren uh-huh but um yeah no they're they totally broke up yeah in this yes moment. they just broke up <laughs> fuck i know um so what was that that we were talking about earlier that i said i might have thoughts on oh the cast just what is up with Cass? Mm -hmm. um, I, I'd like to hear your thoughts because he does a lot of shady shit this episode. And, and we're definitely going to get some answers next episode. Um, but, you know, before we get there, what are your what are your what are you thinking? It's kind of hard to tell. Like, obviously, we're coming up on a situation where a lot of different things could happen. Um, I don't know what Cass is playing at. I feel like I feel I do feel like Sam and Dean are being pitted against each other and I feel like Heaven's like in on that. I'm not sure like how or like what's going to happen, but I think that they think Dean can stop the apocalypse. Um, I do kind of feel like Dean's going to be the one to stop it, actually. But that it would only happen like it, at the expense of Sam's life somehow. So you think Sam is going to die? Maybe.
I, I I'm not sure how this is going to go. I'm just guessing. Um, because they're both set up to potentially be the one to take her down. Yeah. Um, as far as Cass goes, I feel like he's just doing the bidding of, of heaven, um, in like letting Sam out and all that shit and helping them capture Anna. Um, it's kind of like working against Dean. Ooh, I just had another thought. Maybe they're only doing this because Dean needs to think that he's the one who has to kill Lilith in order for Sam to do it or something. Like they're setting Repeat like they're that. setting up Dean to be a part of Sam killing Lilith. But I don't know cuz they didn't they didn't like what he was doing at first. Sam. The whole drinking blood mm-hmm. stuff and getting powers. Yeah. I don't know. Heaven's doing some shady shit. God is doing some shady shit and using Cass to set all of that up. I, I can't tell how it's going to end. And we know that Chuck has already seen the ending. Mm-hmm. Poor Chuck. Well, we don't know what he saw. Right. We know he's drinking a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just so excited. Um, yeah, it's going to be good. How do you rank this episode? Um, you know, there was kind of a lot that happened, but I... I didn't love it for some reason. I feel the same way. I think we're on the same track. Yeah. I wonder why that is. I I don't know. I think I think just because there is a lot of setup, you know, and I I think I think typically we've kind of of felt like that with yeah, the penultimate episodes are kind of always like that, where it's just like setting up the stage for for next time and I I don't I, I think there's a lot of good. I think my favorite part of it is the whole Sam and Dean fight at the end because it's, for me, a, a powerful mm-hmm. moment. Um, But at the same time, I feel like there was just so much going on that I wasn't able to feel the complete weight of it. Um, yeah. What are you thinking? Um... I was kind of thinking situating it around number 25 in my time of dying. Um, I don't know how I feel about it. If I feel like it's better than that, or if I feel like in my time of dying is a little bit more impactful because that's the episode where, uh, John dies. Um, yeah. I think it kind of maybe is more impactful. I I would I would be fine. Like looking at all the other ones that are above <clears throat> twenty five, I like all of those better. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just in general. So, yeah, maybe as the new twenty six instead of after school special. How's that sound? Okay. Yeah. All right. Sweet. So this one's going in as the new number 26, and this one's going in the trunk. Hmm. So I think it's really interesting. I I never picked up on this, but our very first episode of season four was called Lazarus Rising. And the very last episode of season four is called Lucifer Rising. So that's going to be very interesting. Um, I'm excited about this episode. It's kind of like 
uh, it kind of reminds me of like No Rest for the Wicked, the season three finale, where it's like, I don't re- recall all the intricacies of what happens like throughout the episode, but I just remember the ending and being like, holy shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, we're going to watch it together. So and, I'm excited. Uh, I'm so excited to watch it with you. <laughs> I'm going to be screaming um, to at you. To get your reactions. I want you to know. I, I may be screaming <laughs> as well. It also like has one of my favorite uh, line deliveries of like almost all of Supernatural. Uh, the line is not spoilery at all, but it's just I'm awesome. <laughs> and I, <laughs> for those of you who have seen Supernatural before, that I love that line so much. And Aww. I think... I think you're going to cool. love it, too. I've it's got a lot to look forward great. to. Um, I know. I'm. We need to plan this shit. We need to plan it soon because I, I'm really excited okay, to watch it. that sounds good. <laughs> so, like, tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. tomorrow after work. <laughs> no, that's going to be awesome. Well, everybody, you know generally where to find us. Um. You can find us on our blog. We have www.highwaytohellpodcast.com. That's H-W-Y. And then we're on all social media. Um, our handle is highway, at Highway to Hell Podcast. Uh, you can also call and leave us a voicemail at 908-516-HELL, 908-516-4355. And you can also email highwaytohellpodcast at gmail.com. And thanks for joining us again. We'll talk to you next episode when we talk about Lucifer Rising. Bye. Bye. If it keeps on raining, that be scorn of brain. If it keeps on raining, that be scorn of brain. When the levy breaks, have no place to stay. Got what it takes.